Yeah. But going into tonight, this was going to be your retirement fight. You weren't victorious against Gabe Rudiger. However, are you done? Um, yes, I'm done. My wife is, I can feel the heat coming. My wife is off camera here. Um, I was done before. Um, and like I said in the previous interviews, Gabe kind of annoyed me into a rematch. Um, the part about being victorious, for me, honestly, I always do my best. And despite specifically, you know, I wanted to win and get a W. But stepping in the cage for me, it was more about respect. Um, I, I felt like I was being disrespected. And I'm just someone, if you disrespect me, if you challenge me, then I'm going to accept the challenge. And that's just kind of how, how, how I felt about it. I mean, okay, fine, we're one and one against each other, but it wasn't even about that. I think it was more in his mind that he had to get a W, where in my mind, every punch I land is a victory for me because I'm not supposed to be in there in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. You're 43 now. I was 37 when I had my first fight. I stepped on a mat at 36. Um, if I don't look like a complete chump, I'm victorious. You know, nobody, yeah, I've lost fights, but I'm not getting beat up. I'm not getting, you know, I'm not spilling blood all over the mat. I'm not spending a week in the hospital. You know, I have a, you know, my family's my support system. My wife's the greatest. Um, I have three teenage daughters. I have my autistic son. Um, I actually had family come up here. Um, my football team was watching online. And, you know, to me, it's, you don't, you don't win or lose. And, and you, you're not defeated until you give up. And, you know, I did my best, you know. I wasn't willing to get my arm broken to try to get a, a W on my record. Mm -hmm. But, like I said, the, it wasn't about winning or losing. It was, okay, you made all this improvement. You're back to super Gabe. You know, you're going you're gonna to show me some respect. I'm going to go in there and I'm going to try to knock your head off. And that's probably why I got a little tired for no reason. Because I was actually, I usually just throw punches. But I was really, really trying to, like, knock his head over the over the side of the cage and that probably made me get winded plus you know I might have got old you might have got old well you're hanging up the gloves now but I want to know you you've done this these fights you've gone a few years with this but was it enough yeah it was it's just it's a, a this is a transition point for me you know I've, I've actually lived multiple lifetimes so to speak already you know mm -hmm. before I even by the time I even thought about MMA I had already went to earned a bachelor's degree. I'd already played arena football. I'd already had a law degree. I was a single parent of an autistic son who couldn't talk, a 12-year-old, 13-year-old son whose mom abandoned him, who uh, couldn't accept his mom didn't love him, so she blamed, so he blamed me. You know, I had and, and I had to work all day, and my dad's my babysitter. I've, I've had a rough. You know, I worked in psych. I gave up my my chance at having a law career and my pro football career to take care of my family. And then, you know, years down the road, I started doing MMA, and then I finally met my wife, and my wife, to collectively, our chaotic house is actually very functional. Mm -hmm. You know, three teenage daughters and an autistic boy. It's an equal balance to make it work. Yeah, well, she was really independent, taking care of her three before we got together, and then I was taking care of Isaiah on my own. So together, we make it work. So. You know, we actually, people think, oh, their house must be crazy. It's like, no, actually, we have the most functional house in the neighborhood because there's two strong people yeah. leading the house. And then, of course, I got the coolest dog in America, too. <laughs> 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 you did mention that you're a dog person many times. Mm. But going into this, so what are you guys going to do now? You just spend more time with your family, go to take some trips, and all that. Summer's coming up. Your kids are probably out of school. Well, it's spring do? football time. So we uh, Actually, my team, see, I had to miss. The coach added another game today spring passing league and of course I'm up here sorry Aztecs you know I did my best tried um, but you know I'm coaching football my son and I we have passes to the zoo and SeaWorld and the wild animal park you guys all see the Facebook post mm -hmm. but now about five minutes from my house the water park is opening up so it seems like you're gonna have a and lot of time at the water and park and SeaWorld just opened SeaWorld took that over so every day after school I'll probably be in the water I'll work on my tan and you know, we, we just, we get it done. We, we're a busy, we're a busy family, you know. And we just try to set a good example for our girls. You know, that's well, all you can do, you know. Well, going into it, 
being that you retired, it was a pleasure for you to retire in the Bama cage. Getting to know you as a person, like we love you, we know about your story and your family, and it's just, you are a very respectable person inside the cage and outside the cage. You're someone to look up to, and you're kind of a role model, especially for someone like your son, who you put so much dedication and so much work into, and that deserves so much respect just on its own. So we wish you all the best, and we're so grateful that you retired in our cage. Well, thank you, and I, well, I promised Brett if I had official retirement, I'd do it here. And I'm just a product of, you know, my what my parents and my, my grandmother who passed away last year, you know, the example that was set for me. You know, I'm an only child and both my parents are professionals with master's degrees and they were both athletes. So I didn't know any better. I, you went to school and played ball and you went to college. I thought everybody did that, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's just, you know, it's just a product of the people around you and trying to set a good example. And, you know, my wife holds me to a higher standard. She, she doesn't. She talks more trash than I do, <laughs> believe it or not. Yes, my wife talks more trash to me than I she do to everybody else. She just giggled off camera. So yeah, I'm you probably sure heard her giggle. Yeah. Yeah. Well, just know that you know you might have had a defeat in the cage, but not a defeat in life. You're a victorious person when it comes to family and being supportive of all the people around you. So we wish you all the best from here on out, whether it's be at the water park, going on crazy <laughs> adventures with your family. Well, I appreciate it. I mean, you, you, you guys have always been cordial to me. Um, you know, I, I hope, you know, I show respect to everybody I feel is respecting me. And, and my grandmother always said, you know, it doesn't really matter what you have. It's when you're gone, what effect have you had positively on the people around you? And that's kind of what I strive for each day. Just Thanks. how I live. Pleasure knowing you as a fighter and just as oh, an individual thanks. as well. Thank you, Scott.